Looking for a fun, new, exciting way to play fantasy sports? Make sure to check out FanDuel. Use code BENGAL at sign up for a $20 deposit bonus when you enter that code. It is the best and most fun way to play daily fantasy sports. I know I play fantasy football for the daily fantasy sports all the time. I can't really handle the grind of the season. So this is just the best way and the most fun way for me to play any type of fantasy sports. I've been doing it for a couple of years now and FanDuel is just absolutely the best. So make sure to use code BENGAL at sign up. $20 deposit bonus. And also, if you guys want to check out my second and third channels for other videos and games you might see with some of your other favorite YouTubers that I collab with. Make sure you check that out. Both links are in the description. What is going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video for the first realistic style rebuild on the channel. I know a lot of you guys like the fantasy style rebuilds and a lot of you guys like the realistic rebuilds that I've been doing for the past uh, couple years coinciding with these, but we are bringing them back and I figured why not start with my favorite team, the New York Giants, who are unfortunately 1-4 and four after a game losing 63 yard field goal as time expires for uh, Graham Gano and the Panthers to defeat the Giants in a game that it, it should never have even gotten to that point with calls by the officials, including a very interesting first down call on third down and one that Christian McCaffrey certainly didn't get, but we're not going to get into that. Uh, or the ridiculous call from a helmet to helmet defenses receiver call on Landon Collins, even though he was playing the football. And it was incidental. But again, we're not going to get into that. We're just going to take over this Giants team in a, real, a realistic manner with, I suppose, Pat Shermer. We will uh, see if we can rebuild the Giants with realistic draft prospects, like actual guys. Like we could draft Justin Herbert or Will Greer or Drew Locke or Easton Stick if he's in the class or Clayton Thorson, you know. Because honestly, I'm thinking we take a quarterback. I like Eli... But I think the clock is uh, is uh, it, it's ticked long enough on his career. It's running out, and uh, we need to find his eventual predecessor. So let's see if we can do that here in this video. Let's go over the roster first. All right, so this is the roster. We got Nate Solder, Chad Wheeler, Will Hernandez, the starting left guard. He's a rookie out of UTEP University, Texas, El Paso. Um, and Will Hernandez is pretty good. He's had a good season so far, and granted, it is only like week five in the NFL when I'm recording this. John Greco's here as well, Patrick Omame. <sighs> now we may continue with the video. Chad Wheeler, Evan Ingram, who's injured in real life, but he is uh, fine here. As we're going to get all the actual healthy starters back in the game. Odell Beckham Jr., the star wideout, just got absolutely paid in real life. Question is, though... Did Madden update his contract in franchise mode to reflect that? We'll have to see. Uh, yep, years remaining six, and then a, a whole lot of money for Odell. He's getting that quarterback money a little bit. You got Saquon Barkley, backed up by Jonathan Stewart, Wayne Gallman, also Russell Shepard in the receiving court, and Sterling Shepard, not related, Cody Latimer, and uh, of course, at quarterback, Eli Manning, and Kyle Aletta. What happened? Is Alex Tanney not on the team? I could have sworn Alex Tanney was on this team because they cut Davis Webb. Where is Alex Tanney? Did, did, did the Giants not have him anymore? Nah, Alex Tanney is still on the roster. I don't know. He's just uh, not in the game for some reason. Why would it? I don't know. He is Alex Tanney, to be fair. We also, if you guys watch Giants franchise, the actual series where we play all the games on the main channel, a little bit more slow uh, series if you like that. Kyle Laletta, White Lightning Kyle. Vanilla Vic is our starting quarterback. And then on the defensive side of the ball, we have Olivier Vernon. We're sitting in a 3-4. We've actually changed to a 4-3 in Giants franchise. Alec Ogletree. Also have the rookie Lorenzo Carter out of Georgia. Nate Supar. BJ Goodson. Ray Ray Armstrong. The former safety in college and quarterback in high school. Kareem Martin. Connor Barwin. To go along with Kareem Martin. Both 74 overall. Landon Collins. Michael Thomas. B.W. Webb is a cornerback. Curtis Riley at free safety. And, um... Cameron Moore out of BC. I have not seen him on the field once this year. <laughs> also got the Jack Rabbit, Janoris Jenkins, Eli Apple, who's actually played better this year, which is not hard to do considering his first two years. BW Webb, we talked about a little bit earlier. Dante Dion, who has a skill point. And then Sam Beal, the rookie out of Western Michigan, taken in the third round of the supplemental draft. Injured for all of this year, which is all right, I guess. On the defensive line, Dalvin Tomlinson, Josh Morrow. 
RJ McIntosh, Damon Harrison. Um, who who is who are you? John Jenkins. Oh yeah, he was actually decent a couple years ago. Um, he looks a lot different in this picture right now. Again, not a guy that really plays for the Giants. BJ Hill is um, starting, you know, way more often than he is. Kerry Wynn has been starting, uh, and then Dalvin Tomlinson's been a killer. Of course, Mario Edwards, Giants just traded for, or signed actually, because uh, the Raiders released him. And then uh, B.J. Hill, left end. That's where he plays a lot, carry win. The entire defensive line rotates. We just got Damon Harrison starting at nose tackle. Anyway, that's convoluted, but that is the team. Also have Riley Dixon and Aldrick Rosas. It is a solid squad. Even, what, is Chris John Sicoli still on the team? No way. Chris John Sicoli is still on the team. And he's actually listed at defensive tackle. <laughs> but he's kind of like a weird hybrid. So he's at right guard here out of Buffalo. I think he was on the Seahawks for a minute. Yes, he actually is. Picture is that one on the Seahawks. Anyway, so we don't really make too many trades when we do the realistic rebuilds. This is the team. It's pretty much just, um, you know, cuts and simulations. So we are going to simulate to the midseason mark. But first, we got a season goal. How many games do I think this team's going to win? Well, not the Super Bowl. Also, probably not seven. Let's try seven. Mid-season mark. We are two and six. Kind of, kind of expected to be honest. Eagles five and three. Cowboys four and three. Redskins three and four. We actually beat them by a field goal in week eight. Do have some coach XP to spend and some upgrade points. None for Eli. That's disappointing. Eli, he's not even close to entering his prime. I'm sure, he's a 76 overall at, what, 36 years old? 37 now for Eli. But you know what? Sky's the limit with a player of his caliber at this point in his career. He, he, he can go up between 37 to 40, they say, is the prime for an athlete. I have high hopes for Eli. Need him to get some skill points. I might actually hold on to this and wait for QB training boost. Because if we draft a quarterback... I'm going to need that, so we're not going to spend any coach XP right now. I think we're going to need it because we're not winning enough games to really make a huge impact in getting a ton of uh, coach experience. So, kind of just want to hold on to that. Landon Collins is an impending free agent. Also, Mario Edwards, who's played well. Might want to bring him back. Only 24 years old. Aldrick Rosas is a beast. He needs to be better in game. He's automatic for the Giants. John Greco, we're probably going to part with. Let's just let's just resign and we'll see. Landon Collins returns. It's a big first one. Mario Edwards wants uh, more bonus and a better length. So we'll see if we can change that, don't we all? Let me tell you. Aldrick Rosas, I think we should be able to uh, offer a long-term deal to. He is good. So we just offered him like a five-year deal. I almost just want to go longer. I almost want to go six. How about that? You like that, Aldrich? Yeah, he does. He's going to re-sign. All right. So we got two of three. Mario Edwards could be a thing that we decide at the end of the year. But speaking of the end of the year, let's go ahead and advance there. We unfortunately did not make the playoffs, finishing 6-10, and 10, as did the Cowboys. Interesting. Let's check out the stats, see who did what. And uh, Eli Manning still hanging around. Didn't retire. 4,312 yards, which was 4,300 more than Kyle Laletta had. He was one for four. Eli, 24 touchdowns, 14 picks. Honestly, not a terrible season for Eli. I'll take that. Saquon Barkley in his rookie year. I need better production. Five touchdowns. Fumbled the ball four times. Almost 1,000 yards rushing. Only 3.8 yards per carry is pretty bad. Odell, just over 1,000 yards. Eight touchdowns. Sterling Shepard, just over 1,000 yards. Five touchdowns. The rest... I mean, Evan Ingram had a decent year for a tight end. Not a whole lot of touchdowns, but to be fair, nobody did. As far as sacks go, uh, Nate Solder was a disaster, allowing more than a sack per game. But I feel like that's always weird in Madden Sim. Alec Ogletree was the only triple-digit tackler on this team. Tackles for loss, 17 for Damon Harrison, 12 apiece for Olivier Vernon and Dalvin Tomlinson. Quarterback sacks, we have six for Connor Barwin, led the team. OV had five and a half. And then interceptions, Three for Lennon Collins and Janoris Jenkins. Two for Michael Thomas. And then one for Eli Apple and B.W. Webb. Force fumbles. Only two for the entire team. That's very disappointing. And I'm sure no defensive touchdowns as we do not get any. Who won what? Tom Brady was the MVP of the 11-5 Patriots. Marcus Mariota 
of the 9-7 and seven Titans in there at number two. Drew Brees in there. Todd Gurley. No Giants. Shocker. NFC Offense Player of the Year. No Giants. That award went to Todd Gurley. Defense Player of the Year is Jake Ryan from the Packers. Interesting. No Giants. A couple of Bears in there. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Josh Rosen. Saquon at number two. Unfortunately lost that one out because it was a quarterback. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Fred Warner of the San Francisco 49ers. No Giants in there. Time to finally scout as we are going to download from the Madden share for uh, one of these draft classes. What is the most downloaded one? This one is a lot from Stayplation. I checked this out at the start of the year and hated it very, very much. This one's even worse. I mean, it's got a good like to dislike ratio. This one has even better. OSFX. Oh, that's Operation Sports. All right, we're going to use that one. I'm good with Operation Sports. I might disagree. Oh, I guess I already have this. All right. I'm going to disagree with some of the ratings, but that's fine. Not everyone's always going to agree on uh, different college football players and, and how they would relate to the NFL and develop over time. But we are going to download that draft class. Hopefully it features players like Nick Bosa at the top as he's a monster, Ed Oliver, that sort of thing. Her Justin Herbert. I, okay, what did I do? It took that long to import. I didn't even do it. All right, I've gotten this error like eight times now. Not eight, like twice or three times. If it doesn't let me import a file here, what do you want me to do? I'm going to have to restart. I can't import a local file. I'm going to have to restart this franchise, I think. I'm going to try it one more time and use a different draft class. I'll use the top one. And if it doesn't work this time, I'm going to be very, very disappointed. I will have wasted it some minutes. All right, I mean, it's just not letting me do it, man. This is very unfortunate. But, um, I don't really know what to tell you guys. No 2019 draft class is, is downloading. All right, I already have it. It doesn't let me import a local file. Is this going to crash the game? Servers cannot process. Yeah, I got I to gotta restart the league. That is embarrassing for EA, in my opinion. Try importing a local file from very early on. I have a, a lot of draft classes from different years here. Where is the... Uh, is this the one? I think I overwrote the Operation Sports. I think this is the draft class. All right, beautiful. We're in here. In there like swimwear. All right, so I'm going to simulate back to where we were. The stats in this season were irrelevant anyway. All right, this time we finished 5-9-2, and two, which is worse. Cowboys this time went 9-7. and seven. Interesting, these are the upgrade points this time. Ooh, 5 for Saquon. I'll take that. It was 3 the previous time. I wonder if he won Offensive Rookie of the Year. We'll be able to check that very uh, easily. As he did not? I don't know. Maybe. He did. I don't know. Off-season time. All right, we got to bring back Aldrich Rosas. Right off from a six-year deal. He wants a lot more money now. I offered him, like, a lot less previously. This is a fair offer, though, I think. And he's back. Mario Edwards has two upgrade points. How good are you? 78 speed, 78 block shed. He's... He's okay. I just don't really want to offer him more than two and a half per year and he's gonna want that for five years i just i can't i can't offer you what you want it's just not it, I'm, it's not gonna happen sorry who is a free agent in these realistic side re oh hold on in these realistic side rebuilds i try to be more realistic with who we go after but we need a free safety the redskins and cowboys are both trying to bring earl thomas to their respective cities of dallas and uh, the Washington, D.C., the DMV area. And I'm not having it. Earl Thomas, for those who don't know, is currently my second favorite player in the NFL. I'm a huge Texas Longhorns fan. And I would love to bring back... Or not... I'd love to bring back Earl Thomas to one of my favorite teams, I should say. 93 overall. He's 30, but I don't really care about all that. Bring in Trey Flowers could be cool. But I don't really want to do that. Don't really want to bring Jonathan Hankins back to New York either. Or I guess East, uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey, I should say. 
And I don't really like the rest of the options here. We need to upgrade the secondary very badly. And I don't really want Mike Hilton. He's 5'9". He's a good nickel corner option. And only 25. I just feel like I'd have to offer him too much money. Jonathan Jones. Former Packer? Where are you from? I don't I don't know any Packer named Jonathan Jones. I don't I would that was a weird guess. Of the Patriots. Are you particularly good? I'm not really familiar with him. At all. I this is not. Ken Crawley's interesting. I would bring Ken Crawley in. He's a scheme fit. He's young enough. And there's no one really particularly interested in him, which is really the selling point for me right now. That's not a lot of money we're offering him. Let's try a four-year deal worth slightly more. I would want him to come if he accepts this. Um, 94 points. 94 points is, is good, but we're not offering him that much money. That could be a really good play for us right there. Also want to check out the offensive line. We still have a lot of available cap room, but the offensive line talent usually isn't that fantastic. Not going to bring in the bully, Richie Incognito. Jack Muhort's interesting, but the Dolphins are really bidding that up so i am out on that come on show me earl thomas show me accepted for earl thomas he rejected it you're kidding me man ah uh, it's so frustrating i never can get who i want i don't want to scout just yet though i want to go back into uh, sign free agents we got a lot of money back, but no Earl Thomas. So, is it really worth it? Let's go cornerback. Ken Crawley now has uh, a couple more bids on him. Could bring back DRC, but there's not really a reason to with his age. So, we're just going to simulate after this week and just hope we get Ken Crawley, I guess. We got Ken Crawley. He ended up accepting. That's pretty awesome. So, he's going to pretty much be the best cornerback on our team next year. Because Janoris Jenkins is regressing heavily. We can upgrade him, but I mean, it's not going to matter too much. As he's already down to 89 speed at 30 years old. He's got star development, former Florida Gator, and then, what, North Alabama something. They've got to have a mascot. I don't know what it is. But yeah, that regression's hitting hard. Also, if you guys want to know how to pronounce this fella's name out of Missouri, he is criminally underrated in this draft. I think he might be the best tight end in this draft. It's Albert Okwa Ibanam. That's how you say it. Albert Okwa Ibanam out of Missouri. He's very good. He should not be the sixth tight end with C minus catching D run block, D pass block. He's very good. I hate it. NFL draft time. We pick seventh overall. I wouldn't mind trading up here at some point, especially now. Uh, because. We're in a really tough spot with the Ravens on the clock. I am going to pause it so I can have a little bit of time to think about what I might want to do. Justin Herbert is a top quarterback available. He's the only quarterback I really want in this draft class. Otherwise, well, at the top. Otherwise, I would wait for Easton Stick out of North Dakota State in the fourth round. I don't really love Drew Locke. He's actually not bad uh, here in game. I want Justin Herbert. The problem I face is, would the Ravens not take a quarterback? And I know what you're thinking. Oh, they just took Lamar Jackson and Joe Flacco. The Madden system's weird. They could very easily take a quarterback here. So could the Bucks. So could the Bills, even though they just drafted Josh Allen. So could the Jets, even though they just drafted Sam Darnold. We have some bullets to dodge before we get to pick number seven. Ravens, number one overall. Take Ed Oliver. 83 overall defensive tackle out of Houston. The Bucks come back and take Greg Little. New franchise left tackle out of Ole Miss. Don't take Justin Herbert, please. The Bills take Greedy Williams. Top cornerback in this class, probably out of LSU. I don't think the Raiders would take Justin Herbert. They take Devin White. This is our last major bullet to dodge. And it would be the New York Jets, man. Come on. They take Nick Bosa. Very good player. Probably won't be available at pick number five in this actual class. I seriously doubt the Niners with Jimmy G go for Justin Herbert. And they take Trey Adams, who looks exactly like Nick Bosa in-game. And that leaves us a franchise quarterback in Justin Herbert out of Oregon. 
should probably have better speed. I know that 40-yard dash is bad. He should have better than that. He's not fast, fast, but he's he's got better speed than a 5-1-7. I'll bet you on that. He's an 81 overall with superstar development. He is not ranked number one. That's a glitch. He's ranked probably number four or something like that. Uh, superstar development is huge. He's going to have a cannon. 93 throw power is decent enough. 81 deep accuracy. 86 medium, 88 short. Decent enough awareness, good throw on the run, good play action, good throw under pressure. This is our quarterback of the future, Justin Herbert out of Oregon to the New York Giants. We don't pick again for a while. Round two, pick seven. And I would like to move back up. The question is when and where. Bengals go A.J. Brown, add to that receiving core. Damian Harris is a first round pick. The Alabama running back goes to the Cardinals, who already have David Johnson. As the Colts take uh, DK Metla Metcalf, Jesus, David Montgomery at Iowa State, not that familiar with, goes to the Dolphins. Titans take Cleveland Farrell, one of my favorite players in this draft, as they love to take their pass rushers. Redskins go uh, a right guard out of Arkansas, Froholt. Which Halte? David Edwards, a tackle out of Wisconsin, goes to the Seahawks. Chicago Bears take Byron Murphy out of Washington. Jonah Williams goes to Bama. The Chiefs take Bo Ben Shawl, guard out of Wisconsin. What's up with these offensive linemen names, man? Martez Ivy out of Florida goes to the Broncos. And I think this might be my trade up spot with the Lions right in front of the Cowboys. Well, as much as I would like to trade up, I don't know if I can rationalize it. I really don't. Like, based on what we have, I don't think I can. The Lions go Devin Bush out of Michigan, very high overall. Cowboys go Noah Fant out of Iowa. Man, I don't know. I, I, we'll see how this goes. Deontay Thompson out of Bama goes to the Packers. I might try to trade up again. I don't want to give up that much, and it doesn't really make sense to trade for a player here in real life. So we're at a uh, weird spot. What is it, Steelers on the board? I think so. If I don't get this pick, I know the Steelers are going to take my player. I know they are. I need it. I just... I don't know what I'd give up. It might have to be a first next year. They wouldn't accept this straight up, surely. We're going to have to give more. I don't... A four this year? I don't want to give up much for this pick, though. I want it, but I don't want to give up anything for it. It's a really tricky scenario. All right, it's going to be next year's first round pick, a third rounder this year, and a fifth rounder next year for the 22nd overall pick from the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think it's going to be worth it. We will be taking an outside linebacker. Very good hybrid that fits our scheme, fits our system. Josh Allen out of Kentucky. An absolute monster. He can pretty much do it all. Honestly, in terms of ability, he is one of the best players I've seen uh, at the linebacker position in a number of years, at least on the outside. Like I don't want to say reminds me of Lawrence Taylor, but he's one of those really good versatile players that can kind of do it all like LT did. Now, it's not an LT comparison just yet. I think Josh Allen's going to be a beast. That's a lot of praise. I think he's going to be a monster. Welcome to the New York Giants. 79 overall, quick development. Again, not ranked at number one overall. Josh Allen has 84 tackle, 89 hit power, 81 speed. He is very poorly represented in this class. 58 power move and 63 finesse move. Go throw on the Josh Allen film. You tell me that's what you see. 80 block shed. 81 strength, 72 zone coverage. We're going to have to work with it the best we can. That's, again, a, a criminally bad rating for Josh Allen in terms of uh, what his actual stats are. I don't mind 79 overall, but not in that way. With this pick, we're going with a right guard. I think it's going to be Michael Dieter out of Wisconsin. Don't really like any of the tackles at this juncture, so we are going to go Dieter out of Wisco. Good bench press, great top three skills. Welcome to the Giants. 75 overall, quick development as well. Not bad. I'll take that. That's going to be good enough to start on this team. Could have gone with a center instead. I almost want to simulate slowly to see what that center overall is going to be. As Raekwon Davis goes. We're not going to spend much time here. If I just see it, I'll show it to you guys, I guess. Oh, there he is. Ross Pierschbacher. 73 overall. Not that good, to be honest. I'm, I'm all right with our pick now. A little bit more. All right, fourth round. We got to make the most of our mid to late round picks here. Debo Samuel's available. He looks very bad. Will Greer's available. He does not have B throw power. Like, uh, there's some of the ratings in this class are so bad for me. Montez Sweat would be incredible value here. 
he's available in the third round of real life. I doubt that's going to happen. I think he's probably going to go in the second. Shea Patterson's here. A lot of quarterbacks. Like, I just, you just can't tell me that Nick Fitzgerald is better than Will Greer. And by a, a, what appears to be a considerable amount. I think that's just absolutely ridiculous. A throw power to B throw power. But, I mean, I'm not going to complain the entire video about how bad I think this draft class may or may not be done. I didn't, I didn't say anything. We're going to go Paris Campbell out of Ohio State. Good receiving option. He's got decent top three skills. 74 overall star development as well. That is not too bad. 88 speed, 91 XL, 83 catching, 79 catching traffic. Good short and medium route running. Everything for him sitting around 83 overall, which is not terrible. He's clearly not going to wear number 21, though. So we're going to have to do something about that, perhaps, as we go to round five. I'm not taking Debo, dude. He looks so bad. I just, like, I see his skills. I see his skills. I just can't take that. I can't take that. No matter how much I think uh, it'd be a fun pick to bring in Debo Samuel. And, like, David Sills sucks in this one as well. I had him watch because, like, he, I think he's actually very good in real life. Former USC quarterback, as I'm sure they say, every single game at West Virginia. Pretty much seen a ton of those. Uh, we're going to actually go David Sills. We're going to go with him. 66 overall. Ranked number one in the class. What a stellar selection here. There was no real reason to take him other than he's David Sills. We're going to simulate to the end of the draft. There's nothing else here on my board. So just whatever the CPU takes, they take. Probably some players I have watched, but nothing crazy, I imagine. All right. They gave us Connor McGovern, who is a seriously low overall. Jordan Jones and David Moa. I think Connor McGovern should be higher overall in the 62. I think he should be in the low 70s for sure. He's better than the, they're giving him credit, but what's new with this uh, with this lineup? Ed Oliver is the highest overall in the entire class. Nick Bosa, Bo Ben Shawl, a little bit uh, down there. Bunch of guys near the 80, the 81 mark. Josh Allen was close to that 80, didn't quite get it. This is a pretty good draft for us. We had to trade back up to get Josh Allen. I'm convinced the Steelers would have taken him because he reminds me of uh, Bud Dupree, Alvin Dupree coming out of Kentucky. A little bit with his skills and the Steelers needed him then they took him and they needed a right outside linebacker in this class I wasn't you know gonna let him take Josh Allen it couldn't happen so the team has been upgraded I prioritize taking Josh Allen just because I think he's a very very good player over another offensive lineman of course we did draft Michael Dieter Connor McGovern is gonna start at center as our offensive line remains pretty terrible so it could be a rough season for Justin Herbert. Sorry to tell you, bud. That's that's a really bad player to send out there, or really bad offensive line to send out there for Justin Herbert. Is there anyone in free agency we can grab that's at least closer to a 70 overall? I hope so. Just anybody that can play center. John Greco or Ryan Khalil. We're going to bring back John Greco, I guess. Welcome back. You're a better option, at least, in that right tackle. Is there anybody here? Jared Veldier is down to a 70 overall. Injuries really killed his career, but we're going to take him. He even came with an upgrade point into the scheme fit, and it only costs him 50,000 more uh, points of XP to get another skill point, so that's interesting. Offense is up to an 83 overall. Defense, 79. I'd like to find a way to get Lorenzo Carter some action. And I feel like with this particular version of Josh Allen, where he can't rush the passer at all, it would almost behoove us to run Josh Allen as a middle linebacker, where I think that really plays to his strengths and will start Lorenzo Carter outside linebacker. That could be the play because our current duo of linebackers uh, in the middle there, not very good. And Alec Ogletree and BJ Goodson, Josh Allen is the new starting middle linebacker. Olivier Vernon on the outside. Kareem Martin, I don't want you even on the team, man. That's that's just too much. What we're oh, I didn't mean to release him. He's been released. All right, it's been done. BJ Hill will start at left end. That's not too bad. Cornerbacks are decent enough. Still looking for a free safety. Got to upgrade this offensive line. But I think it's not going to be a terrible first season. Well, well, first season for Justin Herbert. It, it might be a terrible 
season, to be honest. I really can't tell you. I also changed the scheme to multiple power run. So Justin Herbert's now a scheme fit, as is most of our offensive line. Wanted to keep Will Hernandez in, as he's going to be a staple of this offensive line. The only one who's really safe, if you will. And, I mean, it really helps out Justin Herbert to have that. So we are going to simulate to the midseason mark. Let's go Giants. Not even let's go Giants. Let's go Justin Herbert. Just play really well. That'd be awesome. Yikes. We're 1-6. 1-6. and six. One and six. Coming off a 41-24 defeat at the hands of the Chicago Bears. Justin Herbert's got some skill points, though. Are we close? I think we're like 100 XP off maybe from the quarterback package, which is what I want. Yeah, about 100. So I'm going to simulate week by week here, just trying to get an extra skill point. Uh, so Jeff, Justin Herbert can get more skill points, I should say, with that extra coach XP, and we're still off of it. We, we got a win. We're 2-6 and six now. And we got it. 3-6. and six. We're turning the ship around. This is a 10-6 and six playoff team. Josh Allen up to a 77 with that one. I want to focus on Field General so it can become a scheme fit. Not looking like that's going to be a thing for the time being. We're close, just not quite there. I'm going to have the CPU handle the rest. And I guess we got to re-sign Sterling Shepard and a few other guys, so that's important. Sterling Shepard, Eli Apple, Riley Dixon, BJ Goodson, a couple guys in there. No J still, you're done. Sterling Shepard, absolutely. We're bringing Shep back for sure. He wants kind of a contract. Okay, I'll pay you till you're 30, but it's going to be at slightly less per year. Still over six. That's a pretty big contract. He's going to re-sign. Eli Apple, he's definitely on the team. He doesn't even want that much money. I'll give you a four-year deal worth 15.8 overall. I can't believe I'm saying this, but... Welcome back, Eli Apple. <laughs> and Riley Dixon's also going to return. So we got brought back the top three guys. I'm not really super interested in the others at the time being. For the time being, at the current moment. We're going to simulate to the playoffs. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say we don't make them. Even though we are on a monstrous win streak. So we missed the playoffs. We go 7-9. and nine. Not actually that bad. I know Justin Herbert had to have won Offensive Rookie of the Year. As he led the NFL in passing touchdowns as a rookie. 3,800 yards, 39 touchdowns, only 7 interceptions. What a monster. Rushing Saquon. Big improvement, 1,200 yards, 4.6 per carry, 7 TDs. Receiving Odell Beckham, 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns, 8 touchdowns for Shep and Evan Ingram. Saquon also had 4 out of the backfield. Blocking. It's improvement. I, I it, That's all I can say. Josh Allen led our team in tackles with 122. Tackles for loss, 18 for OV, 13 for Damon Harrison, 11 for BJ Hill. Quarterback sacks was 7.5 for Damon Harrison, 5 for Dalvin Tomlinson, 3.5 for Olivier Vernon. Interceptions, we have 3 for Ken Crawley, which led the team. Josh Allen even got 2. Not great stuff from the defense, which is probably holding us back. As if our offense was good, I mean, we should be, should be winning more games. We need the defense to step up. They didn't do that this year. 22nd offense, to be fair, is kind of weird. Those are weird numbers a little bit. Defense was bad. Got to improve that. Le'Veon Bell won the MVP. It's funny because he doesn't even play. And then uh, in the NFC, Offense Player of the Year went to Carson Wentz. Justin Herbert at number five. That's got to be Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defense Player of the Year went to Quan Alexander. No Giants. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Of course, it is Justin Herbert. Paris Campbell at number five. Didn't even see what he did. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Josh Allen. So we drafted the Offensive and defensive rookie of the year so that is pretty fantastic and i believe it's time for the off season and we get to download a 2020 class if it screws up this time we're just rocking with it we'll auto generate it doesn't matter justin herbert only had three points the rest of the season it's kind of weird because he won offensive rookie of the year did he not we not get points for that yet no he got it he just didn't get a whole ton of xp unfortunately wasn't even enough to fill his bar at one time, but he did have a very, very good season, especially for a rookie, especially for anyone, to be honest. And he's up to a 91 overall in his rookie season. That is awesome to see. I hope to God there's some good offensive linemen and free agency here. We have money to spend. We do. We have a ton of money to spend. Oh, Jalen Ramsey's here. Get him on the same team as Odell? Austin Eckler, Marshall Yonda could be a guy we go after. Josh Sitton, maybe. 
Eric Ebron, I see Philip Rivers down there at the bottom. This is going to be a very interesting... Who are you? He was a rookie last year? He's not... What, did he get cut or something? You know, I'm interested. I'm interested in, in uh, Daryl Brooks here. I would like to sign him to a huge extension or a huge contract. This could be our tackle of the future. That's a lot of points, but that'd be a player that is super worth it to get. I have to offer on Jalen Ramsey if the Cowboys are going after him. I have to. What is he asking for? Not even 10 per year. How many points would this get me? That's a weird looking face scan. That's 91 total points. I would offer him above 10. So that's six years, 89.7. That's not even six years, 90 mil for Jalen Ramsey. I might even want to improve that to 9.5 salary annually over six years. Signing bonus of six point. Let's go 6.5. For just about 95.7 million. This would be a major signing. I don't need to tell you guys. That would be so big for us. All right. Come on, team. Please tell me we got Jalen Ramsey. He rejects. Noah Spence accepts and the left tackle. What is your name? Daryl Brooks. He accepts as well. He's going to play right tackle for the time being. Because we do have Nate Solder still, who is regressing at a very, very uh, high rate. He's down to a 75 overall already, which you hate to see. But, you know, such, such is the way that it goes in Madden Simulation. Noah Spence is going to start at right end. Dalvin Tomlinson at left end. Damon Harrison as a nose tackle still. He's not regressing at all. That's weird. I mean, he is. It's just not affecting his overall, I guess. The team is is interesting. That's as far as I'll go right now. It wouldn't have made that much sense to sign Jalen Ramsey other than the fact that Janoris Jenkins is leaving. He's like on his way out at 31 years old, already down to an 82 overall. And he was just it was a superstar player that we had to go after. Very disappointing we can't get him. But you know, it happens. Let's download a 2020 draft class. This one. I mean, I know good players. But um I haven't scouted them like I have the players in this actual class. So we will download the 2020 draft class from ADOG8-9. Appreciate you. And um, well, hopefully we take some studs. Why do none of them have a combine grade at this point? They all skipped the combine? Is that what you're telling me? Nobody went to the combine. That frustrates me greatly. Jacoby Stevens out of LSU looks sick. There's another LSU safety. I don't know if he's draft el He's probably draft eligible in this class. He was actually really good. I'm looking through. I don't see him. It's Grant Delpit. I guess he's not in here. So that's a little bit disappointing. How is Najee Harris the number one player in this class? He's a good running back, but he should not be the number one player on this board. It probably should be Tua, honestly, with his potential and ceiling. Jerry Judy's obviously a beast. Interesting player. Time for the 2020 draft. We do not have a first round pick because of uh, Josh Allen, which I think is worth it at this point. He won defensive rookie of the year at a very good season, but we do have a second round pick as Sharif Wright goes to the Vikings. Jacob Eason's here. We don't need him, but I will take a tackle. Andrew Thomas out of Georgia. 77 overall, obviously, again, not ranked number one. 85 run block, 79 pass block, 81 run block power. He is going to start at left tackle for us. He's just, it, Nate Solder's time is, is up. He's done. If you guys are enjoying the video, I would appreciate you hitting that subscribe button if you are not subscribed already as we try to make the best out of a third round pick here. I don't really have a lot of players scouted. Because I brought in the draft class so late. Which is kind of my fault. I don't know whose else's fault it would be. Or who else's fault. We got Ricky Aguayo. Roberto's brother. So we should just trade up for him. Even though we don't have to. But you know. Roberto. Reference. Uh, there's not a whole lot of talent here. We'll go CJ Lott. 70 overall star development. 
I guess that's our new starting center. That was a lucky pick. Round four. What do we have here? Might just take the top player on the board if he's a second round player. Antonio Dean out of Ohio State. Welcome to the New York Football Giants. 71 overall. Decent depth, I suppose. And he will uh, probably not play. That's going to be the end of the draft. Let's check out the... Well, should we even check out the draft recap? I don't know if I want to spoil who some of the other players are. We got Francis Hicks in the sixth round. He's a 76 overall. Only normal development, but... 91 speed, 76 zone, 76 hit power. He looks very, very good. This is the first time in rebuild history, probably, for me, that the CPU has actually drafted a decent player. Unreal. He's going to be our new starting free safety. Okay. This is the upgraded team for season number three. 89 overall offense. Only an 81 overall defense. And I usually do focus on defense, but we just... You know, with just draft picks and free agency, it's a little bit difficult to uh, bring in studs as quickly. So, I know for year three, I think this is a fine spot. We've improved the team like 10 overall, so I really can't complain. Justin Herbert has been a lifesaver, and the offensive line is actually pretty improved. Got to check out still outside linebacker, middle linebacker. And if our free safety, Francis Hicks, can come along, that's maybe it. We are 1-6 at the midseason mark, coming off our first win over the Redskins. The problem with the realistic rebuilds is that when you do it this way, if it's not a god squad, the other teams progress just so much quicker that you are like literally left in the dust. Because they just move past you so quickly, and it's very difficult to catch up, unfortunately. But uh, we're trying out here. 1-6 in year 3 is not exactly what I want. Damon Harrison is a free agent. I wish we were doing better. Evan Ingram, Dalvin Tomlinson, Olivier Vernon, Janoris Jenkins, all will be as well. It's, it's going to be tough to re-sign 31-year-old Janoris Jenkins. Not tough because it will be difficult in-game, but I don't want to re-sign a 31-year-old cornerback. Wayne Gallman's a good backup running back. I want him back. We'll probably bring back OV, even though his uh, best days are behind him in terms of overall at this point. Dalvin Tomlinson, absolutely. Evan Ingram, absolutely. Damon Harrison, absolutely. Brought back Wayne Gallman. Everyone to the start, except for Janoris Jenkins right now. Just with their other cornerbacks, I don't really see the need to bring him back, especially considering what there might be in free agency at the end of this year. So I'm just kind of out on that for right now. We got a 91 overall offense, 81 defense, which makes an 83 overall team because of special teams. And we will simulate now to the playoffs, which unless we win out, we have like zero chance of making... And we didn't make them. Finishing 6-10. and 10. So, we went 5-4 and four for the rest of the season. Not terrible, to be fair. A couple of upgrade points to go around. I like that. Let's check out the stats, though. Did Justin Herbert have a good second season? Ooh, kind of changed around there. More yards and touchdowns this time. Uh, as far as where they go to the NFL rankings. He was number 4 in yards, where he was like number 20 last time or something like that. And first in touchdowns, dropped to 12. 4,300 just about, or just over. 31 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Rushing, Saquon Barkley, 1,200 yards, 9 touchdowns, 4.1 per carry. Sterling Shepard led our team in catches and yards by 2. And touchdowns with 9. Paris Campbell in the slot had 8 touchdowns. Odell played really well also. Offensive line was better than last year, so I like that. Josh Allen led our team in tackles. Tackles for loss was 17 for Olivia Vernon, 17 for Damon Harrison, 13 for Dalvin Tomlinson. Sacks, we get like no pressure at all. Six for Dalvin Tomlinson, four for Damon Harrison. And interceptions, two for Janoris Jenkins, two for Alec Ogletree. We are a very bad defensive team, but it's not a great defense, so I don't, I don't really care about that right now. It's going to get better. We're going to make it so. Seventh offense, which has improved from last year, to be fair. So I like that in terms of yards. And the defense was even better. Just we're not quite there yet. Carson Wentz won MVP of the 8-8 eight and eight Eagles. Very interesting. As uh, two is in there for the Chargers. Chargers took him, Pat Mahomes as well. AFC Offense Player of the Year goes to Carson Wentz. Justin Herbert barely sneaks in at number 10. Defensive Player of the Year is Jalen Smith. No Giants. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Najee Harris with the Seahawks who's up to a 97 overall. I guess they're not satisfied with uh, Rashad Penny. 
Only one giant in there. It's Doran Cohn. And then defensive rookie of the year, we get Francis Hicks in there at number six. Would have been really nice for him to win. Hicks at six. And uh, this is the lineup that we're going into the offseason with. 93 offense, 83 defense. Not a terrible team. It isn't. I mean, it's an 85. We're up to there. And I just hope that season four is going to be a little bit better for us. I think that it will be. I really do. We're not bringing back Janoris Jenkins. It is time to move on. If he's asking for nothing in free agency, we might consider it. But I assume there are going to be some better options here. Deshaun Watson, no. What about Shaquille Griffin? He's not getting major offers, and he would immediately become CB1 on this team. I made some offers. Nothing super long-term, but I did offer a lot of money out there. Would still give us uh, 27 mil remaining in cap, something like that. 27.83. Did that mean, does that mean we got everybody? Jason Kelsey accepts. Shaquille Griffin, Samson Ebukam, and Hassan Reddick all accept. Our defense has been completely revamped. We have a new starting center. Defensively, we have a very good outside linebacker. Hassan Reddick is even going to start over Olivier Vernon, it looks like for right now in terms of overall. I might want to move Hassan Reddick inside. Even though he does profile best as an outside linebacker. Um... Samson to boot camp, I want on the outside as well. Could we move him inside? We, I mean, we could. We also have, like, more 4-3 personnel at this point. How would we run this? It'd be Noah Spence right end. Hassan Reddick left end. Dalvin Tomlinson, Damon Harrison defensive tackle. It'd be Samson to boot camp at middle linebacker. Josh Allen right outside. We'd move him over. And then Lorenzo Carter at left outside linebacker. And just hope he's versatile enough to get the job done. I think it's time to change to a 4-3. This is the revamp team up to an 88 overall after free agency. The offense, Jason Kelsey. I mean, we're stealing him from the Eagles. So that's that's big play overall. The defense is uh, also improved. We'll check that out. Olivier Vernon and Lorenzo Carter are both an 80 overall. It would make more sense to start Lorenzo Carter given uh, his potential to improve. And I think we're going to do that and use Olivier Vernon as a situational pass rusher. Noah Spence at right end. Uh, Dalvin Thomason goes up to an 89 overall defensive tackle. Samson Bukum goes down to an 88 at middle linebacker. But Josh Allen's up to an 86 at right outside linebacker. Hassan Reddick will stay at left outside linebacker as I decided to move other guys down to left end. Shaquille Griffin, big starter at cornerback now for us. We had a really good trio. I, I kind of. <laughs> and then Francis Hicks is like the one really uh, kind of weak part of the entire team. So other than that, we're in a really good spot. NFL draft time. I think this team is good enough to get the job done. I mean, we're, uh, we're approaching a 90 overall. It's not a bad team. As a player that I was considering taking, Quintes German out of USC. Maybe it's Herman. Who knows? Goes to the Panthers. One pick ahead of us, but do we take the fudge? Oh, he looks good, man. He really does. Looking at the offensive line, it's not incredible, but the only place where we could improve is at guard, and I like the tackle, so we'd really be looking for a right guard to replace Michael Dieter. I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to take a safety. And that safety is going to be Craig Weeks out of Stanford. Decent enough speed, but great top three skills. Pretty good combine other than that meh 40. He is an 81 overall, ranked number two in the class. We took him at number 10. Quick development on him as well. He will start at free safety. Of course, uh, Landon Collins is not out of a job now. I just hope there's a good guard here in the second round that maybe we can uh, do something with as there's a top quarterback available who looks pretty good. I, don't, I won't lie there. Tackle. Decent left guard, nothing center, nothing right guard, nothing right tackle, nothing really. We'll just take the top guy available, really, and that is uh, Brandon Rasmussen for our needs, I should say. 76 overall, normal dev. It's a good pick for the spot, but he is not going to come in and start. It's just good offensive line depth that, that you know, the worst. You know, we're going to take Gilbert Yancey here in the third round. His top three skills are too good not to take. So, welcome to the team, Gilbert Yancey, ranked in the top 30. It's a good backup quarterback, 77 overall, quick development, 94 throw power. His stats are actually pretty good. 
You know what? We're benching, we're benching Justin Herbert. Sorry, Justin. Win an MVP next time and you're going to have your spot. All right, we're going to simulate to the end. Don't really care to trade down at this point in the video. So we are just going to simulate and hopefully draft a beast again. Or better than a beast? 76 overall is like pretty good for the CPU. And especially in the sixth round, but he wasn't exactly a beast. We've already replaced him. CPU didn't draft anyone too crazy. Glenn Rich late here is actually not terrible. Can't really catch. <laughs> but other than that, or run short routes. Learn to run a slant. It's a pretty effective route. We are going to put Gilbert Yancey on the trade block next week. And if we could get something really good for him, that would be ideal. Not sure that we will be able to, but he's a rookie quarterback. Decent enough development. 77 overall. I would take something for him. I would. We're also going to put Olivier Vernon on the trade block as well. Make the most of it. No, that's not what that was. You guys get it. We're going to simulate. If I trade them, you guys will be the second to know, I'm sure. Because, obviously, I'll be the first to know. You know. Only trade offers for Olivier Vernon. It's just draft picks. We might as well keep them. I, I don't know what we would have gotten. So, we're going to hold on to him. And the backup quarterback, nobody wants him. Disappointing, but that is what it is. The boot camp's down to an 87. And I am going to let... Our backup strong safety get as many points as he can because he's going to be actually playing in preseason. And then we're going to go ahead and start him at free safety. Craig Weeks, the free safety. Did we check out his individual stats? I don't think that we did. Sometimes I forget and I don't do it. But I am curious. He's still an 81 overall. And he has 87 speed, 87 zone, 77 hit power. Pretty good. All right, let's set a season goal. I think we're going to make the playoffs this year. With uh, our luck, though, that means we're probably going to win, like, one game at the midseason point, and then win, like, four out of our next uh, games, out of our next, like, what, seven weeks, if it's week nine, or week ten, or whatever the midseason break happens to be. I just, I think it's a good enough team, 93 defense, or 93 offense, 91 defense, just come out and perform. Let's get it. Four and four here before week nine. And we are currently bottom of the division as the six and one Eagles sit atop. They have just two more wins than we do, but also uh, three fewer losses. So we're going to need to really perform in the upcoming weeks. Not a whole point, a lot of points for the defense. Offense kind of sitting in the same boat. Oh, man. All right. Season four is uh, kind of a yikes. Come on, playoffs. I don't think we're going to make them, dude. <laughs> we, we could at 10 and 6 grab a wild card spot, maybe 9 and 7. But it looks like we are not going to make the playoffs as we finish 8 and 8. Bottom of the division. Fantastic. So we've improved with our win total year after year, but... Sadly, that's not what I'm after. I want to make the playoffs. Madden Sim doesn't want to let it happen. We're in a very similar situation, as you guys can see some of the receiver stats here. Certainly Shepard with 10 touchdowns. Defensively, things are being really non-responsive here. Um, decent tackle numbers. Great tackle for loss numbers. Do we get any double-digit sacks? No, nobody has double-digit sacks for another year here in the franchise. Any defensive touchdowns? I always check. It's not like it really matters, but it's just like... It's cool to see those players make those big-time plays on defense, get in the end zone. Todd Gurley, MVP. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Todd Gurley. Justin Herbert at number 7. Defense Player of the Year is Chase Hancock, a rookie, I suppose. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Corey Warfield. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Tavon Nixon. So maybe it was a second-year player. Either way, not what we wanted. I don't know what we can do to this team now. Uh, <laughs> We got to re-sign Saquon. We got to re-sign a bunch of guys here in the offseason before the fifth and final season. Hopefully it's been better to us. Hopefully it's better to us than the previous four have been. We re-signed Sam Beal, Lorenzo Carter, Will Hernandez, and Saquon Barkley. This team, you know, we're on the border. We're on the brink of doing big things in season five. Maybe. Maybe not. Probably not. Almost definitely not. 
free agents available. Minka Fitzpatrick. What do I want here? I want offensive line. There are never any good ones. Connor Williams, hook him horns. We might just have to bite the bullet and go after go after offensive linemen this year. Lane Johnson, 34-year-old or 32-year-old Lane Johnson. I feel like I've been brain dead over the course of this rebuild, man. I can't speak. I can't read. I feel like Tom Sawyer. Isaiah Wynn rejects, but Connor Williams accepts. He will play right guard, obviously. Fits the scheme as well, so that's a bonus for getting XP over this fifth and final season. What we need is for this team to play like it's overall. This is at least a 10-win team, and we can't even come close. There's honestly no point to even draft. Hate to say it, there's no point. Because th there's nothing that we can draft here that is going to make the starting lineup. There's just nothing. Unless we draft a sick offensive tackle that can come in and start. But I seriously doubt it. We're going to take Bradley Calico here. He's a 78 overall quick development. He's okay. Uh, he's about the same as every other offensive tackle we've fallen into in this draft. So, I don't, maybe we'll start him at right tackle. That's pretty much the only guarantee I can make. It is not a guarantee. I can't make any guarantees. Top guys available are all quarterbacks. I mean, we drafted one last time, and those ones actually look decent. We might just go with the Scrambler because it's a cool style of QB. And that's going to be Deontay Scott. Welcome to the squad, Deontay, out of Florida State. 78 overall, quick development, another first-round talent. And that is going to do it here for the draft. We have more picks, but I'm not going to bore you guys with uh, just random draft picks on probable bad players. We're going to go ahead and upgrade the team before the fifth and final season. Let's get some production, man. I'm not asking for that much. Just We don't even need to win the division. Just make the playoffs. I need it. 97 offense, 93 defense. I think that this could finally be the year we find success. Maybe, maybe not. Um, we got some coach XP before we simulate straight to the playoffs in the final year. It's pretty much uh, customary, and I hope to God we make the playoffs. We're going to go defensive line, and that's all we have enough points for, so... Come on, team. I mean, it's 97 offense, 93 defense. This is a playoff team. I need this. Joining back in week 16. Come on. Please. Please. We've missed out on the playoffs again. We went 5-11. and 11. With a 91 overall team, 97 defense, or 93 offense, 97 defense. Fuck! 97 offense, 93 defense. <laughs> Can't even speak. That's what I'm most frustrated with. This is the end of the video. Uh, I hate for it to suck like this, but there's nothing I can do when Madden Simulation is so bad that a 91 overall team wins five games. All right, not that overall is everything, but just look at the overall of this Giants team. Everyone's sitting, you know mid to high 80s to 90s right let's look at the cowboys who won nine games like how do you have this lineup i don't understand what's the progression like there and then what was it the eagles who won a few games as well i don't know how everyone progresses so well on the other teams all the time it's unbelievable to me uh, it's just how do we have a 91 overall team and win five games. I'm never not going to be frustrated when something like that happens. But that is going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. More than I did. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.